My close friend's dying wish was for me to continue visiting her disabled son, but my husband just received a once-in-a-lifetime promotion across the country, and he wants to make the move. Posted by you slash pickled sunflower. When I, 30F, was in college, I got a job looking after an elderly couple's middle-aged, disabled son, John, now 50M, in the afternoons and on some weekends. John is unable to take care of himself and requires constant supervision, but he is overall a very pleasant person. I grew up with two severely disabled siblings, so I am quite comfortable with John. I don't have any formal caregiving experience, and because Jan and Jerry were retired, I was almost never completely alone with John. They took on the heavy lifting, so to speak, but they liked to have me around so they had the freedom to run errands by themselves, go on walks, take naps, etc. Caring for John was truly a full-time job, and hiring me helped lessen the burden. They were extremely kind people, paid me well, and treated me like family. Over time, I grew very close to Jan, Jerry, and John. I brought meals for them every week, and we would eat together. It stopped being about the compensation, although they did compensate me generously. This arrangement lasted for about four years. After I graduated college, I stopped working for them formally but still spent time with them regularly. Around this time, Jerry passed away. Jan and I remained close, and I returned to assisting her with John on a part-time basis, even though I had a full-time job by then. John is Jan and Jerry's only child, and all of their siblings are either deceased or live far away. They had many close friends from church and the community, but it was still difficult for Jan to find the support she needed. About a year after Jerry passed away, Jan was diagnosed with cancer. She continued to care for John full-time, even while battling cancer and undergoing treatment, but eventually, as her disease progressed, she moved John to a full-time assisted living center. Toward the end of her life, we visited him together, and she expressed her fear that he would have no visitors and become depressed after she passed away. She asked me if I would continue to visit him regularly, and I agreed. She told me this was her only dying wish. Jan passed away over three years ago, and I have remained a part of John's life ever since. I visit his care facility, which is over an hour away, at least twice a week, because it is important to me to uphold my promise to Jan. However, my husband recently received a once-in-a-lifetime job offer across the country. We are talking thousands of miles away. I'm so happy for my husband, but I can't shake this awful pit in my stomach. If it weren't for John, I would have absolutely no hesitation about moving, but I can't let go of my overwhelming guilt. John really has no other visitors. If he's lucky, a church friend might visit once every six months or so. If I leave, he will be alone. Yes, he has his caretakers, but they care for dozens of people each day. Most of the other patients in the facility are far less amicable and pleasant than John, so he struggles to make friends. The personal connection just isn't there, and without it, I worry he will regress. I really don't know if I can move across the country in good conscience, but I know refusing to leave could jeopardize my marriage. Do I have any legal options if I wanted to pursue moving John to a care facility in my new city? Money is extremely tight, so I can't fathom hiring a lawyer or taking on any personal financial responsibility for John, but I just don't know what to do. Edit. Thank you all for the overwhelming number of replies. I never expected this post to receive so much attention. I'm still sorting through my feelings, but I have to accept that it would be unrealistic to put my life on hold just to be there for John. Thank you all for the amazing suggestions. I'm going to get John a tablet and plan by weekly video conversations. We'll start video chatting before I leave so he has a chance to get used to this new form of communication, in conjunction with the usual in-person visits, of course. I'm also working with his church to find him more visitors. Thank you all so much. My husband thanks you as well. In response to the question about who has power of attorney over John, to be completely honest, I don't know. I would imagine it's one of his aunts or uncles. That worries me, however, because they are all in their 80s and 90s. I have a lot of unanswered questions about John's future, but I do know Jan and Jerry planned well financially, and he has a large trust. I'm going to talk with the staff at his care facility to see if they can give me any additional information. Update 7 months later. Last time I posted, I was overwhelmed with guilt about the prospect of leaving my disabled friend to move across the country. I honestly couldn't tell you how many hours I cried over the situation. It opened up so many cans of worms. Before this, I was living on autopilot. Coming to terms with everything made me realize that I'm still grieving my parents. I still feel guilty about not putting in enough effort taking care of my disabled siblings, which placed more of the burden on my parents. I feel guilty about not visiting my siblings more. I miss Jan and Jerry terribly. I miss when I was younger and everything seemed so much easier. I didn't want to leave my home of 30 years, but I knew I had to. I was so scared of letting my husband down. I just had so many emotions tangled up in my promise to Jan, my commitment to John, and the prospect of moving thousands of miles away. 
I received so much great advice on my post. I know I didn't reply to most of the commenters, aside from a few special PMs, but I really can't put into words how much all the support meant to me. It truly helped me when I was in a low place. So, here's the update. My husband and I bit the bullet and made the big move this past February. Before I left, I bought John a tablet, and we practiced video calling three or four times. Honestly, it didn't go very well. He didn't seem to connect with me as much through Skype. He was distracted, irritable, and didn't seem to recognize it was me inside that tiny computer. The last time I visited him, I was heartbroken. I gave him a huge hug and a kiss. He's not usually into physical contact like that, but he accepted it really well. I also gave him a care package with some of his favorite candies and treats, and he was really happy. It was so bittersweet. I can't say I ever really felt confident in my choice. We continued with video calls bi-weekly until about two months ago when I received a call from his treatment facility that John passed away after choking on a plastic game piece. I'm still utterly devastated. He was one of the most special people I've ever known, and it's hard to accept the reality that he's really gone. It's still a shock to me, even just typing this out. I know Jan and Jerry believed in heaven, so I like to think they are all together now, happy and at peace. I miss all three of them very much. I can't thank this sub, and my professional licensed therapist, Lowell, enough for the support. I know this is a really depressing update, but I've wanted to thank all the commenters on my original post for a while, and it seemed fitting to make a final post. Commenter. John's mother was asking you to do what you could to ensure he wasn't alone without her, and you went above and beyond. Not only did you check in on him, but you treated him like family, almost to the point of putting him before your own husband. I can't imagine that's what John's mother intended, she certainly didn't expect you to spend decades of your life tied to caring for John on her behalf. I'm so sorry that John passed away. I'm sure his mother would have been overwhelmed with gratitude for the care you showed him, and through him, for her and her memory. I'm also sure John would have been incredibly grateful for how amazing you were with him. Neither of them would have wanted or intended for you to sacrifice your life to make his a little better. You should be so proud of yourself. Very few people would have given as much as you did. I really hope you don't beat yourself up for moving away, you absolutely did the right thing. You're clearly a thoughtful, kind, and caring person, and I wish you all the best because it's what you truly deserve.